It's a tough automobile market out there. Car prices have come down from 2021 highs, but other factors are giving consumers some pause. A new note from Bank of America points to the quote, all in cost ownership, which includes elevated interest rates, insurance and maintenance costs. But one big auto executive thinks EV ownership could actually save Americans money. Yahoo Finance's executive editor, Brian Sazi, spoke to Ford CEO Jim Farley about the consumer experience with electric vehicles. We think almost half of Americans would save money by buying an EV. Let's take the politics out of it. You know, we think for customers, they love the flexibility. They love not having to go to the gas station. Uh, they, they love having a full tank every morning. They like having a digitally enabled car that normally comes with an EV. There's a lot of incredibly attractive consumer aspects of an EV. I think it, it started off as an expensive technology and one that was really dominated in the urban world where you know politics play out. And of course, with the charging infrastructure and building a whole new infrastructure outside of gas stations, it was bound to be you know, politicized. But that's what we're focused on as a company. We're focused on the, the customer. We're seeing customers who buy a Mach-E or a Lightning, they don't go back to an ICE vehicle. They, they, it's like a different experience for them, and they don't want to go back to the other experience. And for more on this, we turn to Greg Migliori, who is the editor-in-chief of Autoblog. Greg, great to see you, and thanks for joining us on this topic here. I mean, you just heard from the Ford CEO talking about some of the potential cost savings that buyers of EVs long-term could potentially bake into their financial planning. Where is that stacking up in terms of the prioritization and the purchase decision-making that we're seeing right now more broadly among consumers. Hey, good morning, Brad. Thanks for having me. I, I quite agree with Jim Farley. I think he's spot on. I think, uh, you know, with EVs, it's a technology that doesn't need to be politicized. It's just a good, interesting technology. I think it works for a lot of people and for some people it won't. Perhaps they need to stick with, you know, gas vehicles or hybrids, plug-in hybrids. But I think Jim is taking a very practical approach to the market. And he's also trying to take a you know, a measured approach. He wants to educate consumers saying, hey, you know, maybe a home charger can work for you and that will relieve range anxiety. A lot of times when you install a home charger, you could get some tax rebates or incentives from your, either your insurance company or your utility company, things like that. Uh, with gas prices, it seems like they're always in fluctuation, right? And insurance rates and uh, all sorts of maintenance costs are going up because the average age of a vehicle is hit, I think, 12.6 years. Uh, vehicles are older and older. Uh, with EVs, there's often fewer maintenance costs, fewer maintenance chores associated with the vehicle. So I think trying to present it as a practical option for a lot of people uh, could really resonate with a lot of American drivers. It's interesting because we've got to kind of figure out where we are in terms of this cycle of for the EV purchases, what's going to bring down pricing, number one, what's also kind of the general consumer sentiment around EVs as a whole, and have we, have we hit and already moved through the, the trough in demand as many of the companies are kind of entering into this demand generation phase and trying to get the messaging correctly as well? I mean, it, it, part of that was trying to make EVs sexy. Like nobody was looking at the Leaf a decade ago or a decade plus ago and saying, man, I got to get in that car. Now Tesla came along, Lucid came along, you've seen Mercedes come along with the EQ series and Ultimately, that's added in this kind of uh, this appeal to it. So where are we at in the cycle right now? Yeah, I think we're sort of moving beyond that early adopter phase. And we're still in that spot where uh, a lot of the early adopters have their vehicles. And then there's some skeptics, people who think, well, I'm open to the technology, but I'm not sure it's going to work for me. And that's where like an approach like what Jim Farley is taking could be very effective. Uh, I also think getting some more products, some more refreshed products on the market, uh, to your point, Brad, could really help. Uh, Chevy's going to launch the new Equinox Electric this year. They're expanding the range of the electric Silverado this year. So it's more they're moving beyond just the work truck versions into some higher spec trims, uh, things like that, that will help grow the market and offer consumers uh, a greater variety of vehicles. I think a lot of it does come down to just a, a product decision. You know, you're in the market for a new car. You think, hey, that Rivian looks pretty good. I'm interested in that. Maybe I'll go ahead and investigate that. Or, hey, I've had a Chevy Equinox for years. Now there's an electric version. Let me find out more about that. 
So I do think right now we're at like 8% of the overall market is EVs. I could see us getting to like 10 or 12% this year if some of these new product launches resonate with consumers. It was clear in 2023 that the Cybertruck in the lead up to and then in the kind of falling action thereafter, the ability to deliver a few of the vehicles and, and start to really move them into market, that that was the story of 2023 for the EV market. Is there a clear or outsized winner right now in terms of mind share or even market share for 2024 that could potentially take the cake? You know, right now, I think it's too early to tell. I do think Rivian, uh, which unveiled a portfolio of new vehicles, uh, I think in February or March, they look very strong. They're also refreshing some of their core models. That's the R1S and the R1T. Uh, those are going to hit the market fairly soon. Like I said, Chevy has a whole fleet of electric vehicles, you know, from Silverado to the Equinox. The Blazer EV is going to get some, I think, critical mass this year. They're flooding the zone in like crossovers which is a critical space. Uh, so I think basically as more and more products launch, uh, you know, again, we'll see how it shakes out. It's hard to really like pick who's winning right now. I think it is a little too early. I know we're in June already, uh, but I mean, right now I think it's, you know, nobody's really achieved any sort of, you know, pole position as we speak.